when we go through the cycle, you're talking about sex hormones and sometimes they're higher and estrogen's higher, progesterone's higher. Mm. When is the best time to train? And does that training, should that training shift depending on where we are in our cycle from um, the intensity level or the type of training we're doing? So if you were to ask me this five or six years ago, the research at that point was indicating that, yes, that you should be syncing with your menstrual cycle. But as more and more research is coming out, it's muddy to the waters. And what I mean by that is from a molecular standpoint, we see when hormones are low, so your follicular phase, your body is more stress resilient. You can use more carbohydrate, you recover better, you have more aggression, more confidence. There's a lot of things that will promote being able to train super hard. And then after ovulation, as those hormones start to come up, we see a metabolic shift where there's more reliance on fat over carbohydrate. We have an increase in our core temperature. We have a a decrease in our stress tolerance, and we're not as stress resilient. But again, we don't know if every woman ovulates. So it's much better from an individual standpoint to track how you feel, to find your own patterns and dial in your training that way. Um, If you're really trying to make gains, this is where you can play around with how you feel in low versus high hormone and see how stress resilient you are through different metrics. Um, But we can't put a blanket statement out because the sex hormone variability is so large, even from cycle to cycle, depending on stress and circadian rhythm. So that's why the recommendation now through the research is we have to take the qualitative, which is how we feel, with the quantitative of known metrics and pull them together to have a plan. Okay. So it's not it's not as easy as day one through five, do this. Day five through 13, do this. It's not that simple. No. It's, nope. yeah. Okay. No. But with... It, but you're saying what I did pick up is in that earlier, early follicular or late, late follicular from day, around day five to day 13 before ovulation, that's where we are at our maybe peak generally. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, another, if people are using um, wearables that tra- track heart rate variability or HRV, uh, we see that the HRV will plummet after ovulation because progesterone has a direct effect on vagal tone or our autonomic nervous system which increases our respiratory rate, increases our resting heart rate, which are two metrics that are used for heart rate variability. So we don't want women to think that they can't train when they see heart rate variability um, kind of plummet because it's not a true indication of recovery. It's just an auspice of your central nervous system um, changing that happens across the cycle all the time. So this is where, again, if you're looking at just one metric of using wearable data, a woman might say, oh, I'm I'm not supposed to train today because my readiness score is so low, when actually it's just looking at the fact that your nervous system has changed a bit and it doesn't have any indication on your peripheral ability to hit training leads. That's why, you know, I often tell women, when you show up at the gym, we have a mental and a physical check. If you enter the gym, mentally you're two, physically you're six, let's warm up and see after uh, a really good mobility and maybe a couple of heavy lifts how you feel. Does your mental capacity come up? Great. Go on with the training session. Does your mental capacity not come up and your physical capacity start to drop? Then definitely call it a recovery day. Uh, Because we like people to be able to separate what's the physical and mental because the mental component is so important for executing really good training, especially in the CrossFit world where we have really technique-oriented lifts and then Metcon that's really high intensity. Mm -hmm. You heard it. You heard it from the boss. We can have skill days. You will not lose fitness if you have a recovery day. In fact, you'll probably flourish. So. Thank you for is very important. People underestimate it. You cannot get better without recovery because the stress comes in exercise. The gains come with recovery. Yeah, I really like the the practicality that you just provided us of this. You come in on a scale of one to ten. Where are you mentally? If it's low, okay, don't 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 freak out just yet. Let's get warmed up. Let's get the prime the system, and if we can bring that mental capacity up to maybe that, you know, five, six, seven, 
then maybe we can go for it. But if not, don't fight it. And that's another, we have a lot of badge of honors, badge of honors in CrossFit. You know, we're tough. We can, we can handle it. And I think it's really nice to hear that um, we should probably not sometimes, you know, it's okay to back off. 